All right, so I'm gonna read our Achieve article for today. Today is Wednesday, March 18th. So I'm going to read it out loud just like we normally would in class. And then I want you to reread it at your level and then answer all the five steps for the five-step lesson. And then I did assign an additional article. It, you don't have to do that one today, but sometime between now and the next time I do a read aloud for Achieve. I'm just going to read one aloud per week. Um, so you could read it, the other Achieve article tomorrow. And it's just the article and the activity. It's not a five-step one. And it's about dogs. So I thought that would be a fun one we could read. All right. So this article is called From Little Havana to Chinatown. Um, it's a news article. It's written in Miami, Florida, and it was written on February 25 of 2020, so this year. Salsa music spills from storefronts. The scent of Cafe Cubano swirls in the streets. A spirited game lures a crowd. The clatter of dominoes, chatter and laughter, jubilantly building as the match intensifies. Welcome to Miami, Florida's Little Havana. The U.S. is home to immigrants from all over the world, but neighborhoods like Little Havana help to preserve the unique heritage of its residents. And so heritage was a word that was blue and underlined, so that means it's going to be one of the vocabulary words. Heritage means the traditions, achievements, beliefs, etc. that are part of the history of a group or nation, usually singular. Singular means just one, so you wouldn't usually use heritages unless you were talking about more than one group of people. Um, and heritage is a noun because it's a thing or um, an idea, kind of. All right, so from New York's New York City's Chinatown to San Diego's Little Italy, these heritage hubs celebrate the importance of culture and ethnicity and they allow visitors to delight in the nation's diversity. Diversity means the state of having people who are different races or who have different cultures in a group or organization. Diversity is also a noun because it's an idea. Cuban exiles shaped the landscape of Little Havana beginning in the 1950s. It became known as Miami's Ellis Island the historic immigration station in New York Harbor that welcomed newcomers for over 60 years. And in 2017, Little Havana was named a national treasure by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. And this treasure has it all. Traditional Cuban food, open air markets, art galleries surrounded by a thriving music scene, these attractions draw visitors to Little Havana, where well-dressed residents often gather in the shade to play dominoes. Peppered with spirited discussions, the games heat up with the Florida sun and the players' competitive spirits. In much the same way, New York City's Chinatown hums with an electric energy. The neighborhood attracts crowds of visitors daily, beckoning bellies with dumplings, pork buns, and hand-pulled noodle dishes. Meanwhile, bargain seekers flock to Chinatown's bustling Canal Street shopping area. While many cities in the U.S. boast Chinatowns, New York's is one of the largest, and it's also one of the oldest. In, eight, in the 1870s, Chinese immigrants were offered work in the West. As these opportunities lessened, locals accused them of taking their jobs. Faced with discrimination, Many of these immigrants moved east to New York. They band together to form a tight-knit community. So discrimination is another vocab word. You should know this one from when we read um, earlier this year, the Watsons go to Birmingham. We talked a lot about discrimination, um, but I'll tell you the definition again. Discrimination is a noun, it's an idea. The practice of unfairly treating a person or group of people differently from other people or groups of people. Today, New York City's Chinatown boasts markets, museums, and galleries steeped in Chinese culture and history. At Columbus Park, in the heart of Chinatown, people play mahjong, a, tra a traditional Chinese game. They also enjoy perform performances by Chinese opera troops. 
And every spring, a 15-day Lunar New Year festival marks China's largest and most important celebration. If you want to get a little social studies in today, I encourage you to learn about the Chinese Lunar New Year Festival. Um, when I taught second grade, we did a whole huge celebration with it. Um, and it was really fun and exciting and the kids loved it. So if you don't know about the Chinese L Lunar New Year celebration, I encourage you to look that up separately today and learn more about it. On the West Coast, Little Italy in San Diego preserves the legacy of Italian and Portuguese immigrants. These immigrants established the historic fishing community in the 1920s. In the 1970s, the neighborhood fell into decline. But revival efforts in the 1990s put a new shine on the cultural jewel. Today, it's a popular tourist destination. A little uh, flashback from last week. I want you to think about the skill we were practicing last week with text structure. See, tell me if you can identify what text structure that paragraph was just written in. So if you have to rewind and listen to that paragraph again, see if you can tell me what text structure that is. You can also put the answer to that on that little, um, the blue, remember I'm doing, I'm using I Achieve on my iPad today. So remember these blue little dot, uh, circles here, the wheels with the arrows. You can click on that and click generate questions. And then you can type your answer in there with what you think the text structure is for that paragraph. And that paragraph was the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth paragraph. So it's the third one from the bottom. Um, and if you see a different text structure in other paragraphs, I challenge you to also leave those in your notes. All right, the neighborhood covers 50 square blocks, including a massive piazza, an Italian-inspired public space featuring shops and art galleries, Locally owned eateries serve delicious pasta and seafood, and the largest Italian heritage festival on the West Coast is held there each fall. As the saying goes, a tree is only as strong as its roots, and in the United States, those roots continue to spread from all over the world. Gradually, they intertwine, creating a new, ever-evolving American culture. But it's these culture cultivating communities that help the country hold on to and grow from its varied roots. They've allowed many people to stay connected to their homelands and enriched each other, enriched others with new experiences. Enriched is another vocabulary word. Enrich is a verb, which is an action, and it means to improve the quality of something or to make something better. All right, so that is the read aloud for today. Make sure that you go back and you do all five steps. Read the article again at your level. Um, remember the little trick they taught us about how to preview the questions. So click the print. I'm trying to do this backwards. And then we click on um, print multiple steps. So I changed it to print multiple steps and then I click on the activity. Whoopsie. And I believe you will do the current selected um, Lexile level. You hit OK after you've clicked on the activity. It's going to pop up in a separate tab for me. See, oh, there it is. See, and now I have all the questions for. Um, the article so I can flip back and forth. Um, I can also read the questions ahead of time. So question one, what is this article mainly about? Question two, which of these is a statement of opinion? Remember, opinions are things that um, someone thinks, not something that's a fact. Um, and then question three, the article states, and it gives me a little blurb. It says the author's purpose for writing this passage was to, we talked about author's purpose last week when we were talking about text structure, um, because text structure helps us kind of identify why the author is writing it. Um, so author's purpose, there's four different kinds, remember. They either want to entertain us, well, I'll go in order, they want 
to either persuade us to think something. Um, they want to inform us about a topic. They want to entertain us with a story or um, with the article, or they want to explain something, why something is the way it is. So those are the four purposes. And then remember, go further than that. So what are they explaining to us? What are they informing us about? What are they entertaining us with? Or what are they trying to persuade us to think? So that would be the answer to that question because it's got um, a lot longer um, answer choices than just those four words. Um, which is the closest antonym for the word diversity? Remember, antonym is opposite. Synonyms are same. Um, suppose he, Jin, wants to find out about Lunar New Year's Lunar New Year festivals. She would find most of her information, and it gives me different choices about where I could get information. So this is more of like a um, you're using a little bit of common sense. If you wanted to look for something, where would you look and what should it be about? So if I'm thinking I'm going to get the most information from a book, well, what would that book be about that would support what the question is asking? And the question is asking me, what are Lunar New Year festivals, or not what are Lunar New Year festivals, but she wants more information about them. So the book would have to specifically talk about Lunar New Year festivals or have that type of information in it. Otherwise, it might not be the best book for me. I might want to choose a website instead. In this one, there's four different choices. In a book, on a map, on a TV show, or in a dictionary. So, kind of would have to decide which information on those four media channels would give me the best information about Lunar New Year festivals. All right, number six says, read this passage from the article. It gives me a passage. It says, in this passage, the word immigration means, so I'm going to use what was given to me in the passage, um, and then I'm going to also use my understanding of what that meant in the passage. I'm probably going to also connect some background knowledge since I have some hopefully you do too, about immigration, and then choose the best answer for that vocabulary situation. Then question seven says, which passage from the article best supports the idea that many immigrants were not treated fairly after they had been living and working in the United States? And then it gives me four different choices. Um, already, I'm going to remember that we read one of the vocabulary words, discrimination, which told us that that is exactly what that means, is when people are not being treated fairly because of their race or ethnicity, culture, something of that. So just that alone gives me a kind of a little hint about what I might be looking for in the answer choices. And then question eight says, the article says all of the following except... So now I'm looking for something that was not said in the article, and then that would be my answer. So use all of these pieces of information and these skills to do your best on the Achieve article today, um, or whenever you get it done, maybe tomorrow, over the weekend, next Monday or Tuesday. I'll be doing our next article um, on Wednesday, which is usually our regular day for Achieve. So that works out. Um, and then also try to get that 70%, 75% or higher. Um, when you get a question wrong, really go back and see if you can fix the answer by looking back in the article. Don't make another, don't make a guess. Don't just try to pick another answer. Go back and see if you can figure out which answer better fits the question. Remember, you just use all your skills. If you need to, underline the question, really think about what is the question asking me, right? What kind of information do I need to answer the question? Just like we do in small groups, you guys are going to do awesome with this. I am so excited to see your results. I know you guys will be doing great. Have a great afternoon. Let me know if you have any questions or any problems today, okay?